Um, so this is Alex's talk on graphing when your friends, uh, graphing when your Facebook friends are awake. Sorry. So please give Alex a very warm welcome. Uh, hey everybody, thanks for being here. Uh, can you hear me okay? Am I, am I microphoning? No? I'll, I'll just, oh, there it is. That's the stuff. Okay, good. Well, okay, all okay now? Okay, let's do it. Um, so hey, I'm Alex. I work on the security team at Atlassian. Uh, I'm from Sydney, so I hope you can understand my ridiculous accent. And uh, in this talk, I'm going to, actually, before we get to that, here's a photo of me and my friend uh, Baz. And um, this isn't, like, I, some people Some people will actually believe it. So this is not a real photo of me and Obama. <laughs> like, this is, this is some dodgy Photoshop I did. My arm's not that big. That's, that's, not, that's not right. Um, oh, uh, recently somebody wrote about a blog post I did, and they referred to me as a hacker who goes by the name Alex. So that's, that's going to be my hacker name now, and I can't change it. And uh, as part of this talk, uh, if you have, like, if you... If you aren't following what I'm doing, or you don't know what I'm talking about, or you think I'm wrong, or you have a question, or you have a heckle, or something, just yell at me, just do it. Like, I have no power over you, I'm just the kid with the microphone, so please do it. Um, there will be a dedicated heckle break later, if that's what you're into, but feel free to just go for it any time. Some of you are like, is he kidding with the heckle break thing? Yeah. So let me tell you about a thing that happened to me recently. Um, one day I was on this website, I was on Facebook.com. Facebook is where you can see, uh, it's a website where you can see all the political memes your friends are liking. And uh, I saw this thing on the side. This is like a little Facebook chat sidebar. And it's got these little green dots next to it. And uh, it's got like people and their photos and their name and a green dot next to their name and uh, a little time for some of them. This person's got 18 minutes. And I was like, what's the deal with, what's the deal with these green dots? What do, they, what do they mean? And so I wanted to, know, wanted to know more about how they worked. I wanted to like kind of go under the hood. I wanted to kind of be a mad hacker like this guy. Um, you can tell this guy's a hacker because he's walking around in floating Java. Um, whew. All right. And so it actually turns out it's really easy to figure out what's going on. I found this really easy two-step process to uh, being a hacker. Step one is to go to your browser and right-click on the browser somewhere. And step two is this. That inspect element <laughs> button, that's good stuff. <laughs> Thank you to that guy. Um, so yeah, when you right-click and inspect element, that's it. Um, you've done it. You're hacking. And so here, here we go, I've done it. Um, so down the, on the top of the screen is Facebook, and on the bottom of the screen is what's probably the source code to facebook.com. Um, and so uh, when you look at that stuff, you can see what's happening inside, you can see what's happening you know, in, on facebook.com at the bottom. And so uh, here's, here's a fun fact. When you, when you open the inspect element uh, developer tool things in Chrome, and when you, go, when you do it on facebook.com, and you go to the little JavaScript console thing, this is like a place where you can like, all your JavaScript areas appears here, and you can like write JavaScript in here and it will execute. But when you go there on Facebook, there's this big red stop warning thing, which says like, hey, if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't know why you're on this page, don't just copy and paste whatever code someone tells you to do because it's gonna like steal all your stuff. So I guess what happened here is that Facebook had a problem where people would send each other, people would send each other like, here's how you can hack your friend's Facebook account, right click inspect element, be a hacker, go to this thing and then paste this JavaScript code that actually just steals your account and gives it to me. So that's why Facebook put this big red stop thing there. But it's okay because we're hackers and we know what we're doing, so we can go here. Um, so here we are, we're hacking, uh, and we're inside, uh, inside Facebook.com, and we can see uh, all the network requests that are going off. So this is showing you like, all the stuff that the client is loading like, as, you're, as you're on there. So like, it's like stuff from requesting CSS to like, requesting more HTML, uh, all that kind of stuff. And so the thing that interested me is this one here, this pull thing. Um, I don't know how I found this one. I was just clicking around randomly like an organized person would do. So I have, I have no justification for why I stumbled on this thing, but oh well, here it is. And I notice that when I click on this uh, pull thing, uh, it shows me, it gives me a bunch of JSON. And the JSON looks like this. And it was really fun for me to get this random spaghetti JSON thing and try and figure out what it means in reverse engineering. So uh, guess what? You guys get to do that. You get, you get to tell me what this does. So I can be a lazy presenter and you can all you know, join me in hacking. This is not actually hacking, by the way, I, in case. <sighs> it's fine. So uh, what is this? Someone want to tell me? Yeah, it's saying that the type of this is a message. See, this game is easy. Uh, it's a message type. OK, what's this thing? Sorry? Yeah, counter. Why is it called SEQ, though, if it's a counter? Yeah, sequence number. That's right. And so this is message number four. OK, great. And what's this thing? Yeah, so who's, it's a user ID, but whose user ID is it? 
Yeah, it's my user ID. So if you want to add me on Facebook, it's like right here. Just go for it. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's too late now. It's already in my slides. Uh, OK, so what is this thing over here? Yeah, it's friend's user ID. Anyone have, anyone think it's something else? Yeah, timestamp, right? So it starts with 1-4, and it's the right number of digits to be uh, a Unix timestamp, you know, the time since January 1, 1970, which is, you know, the time that we should start measuring from. But, um, so which is it? Is this a timestamp or is it a user ID? It's actually my friend being a massive troll who's, my friend's user ID looks exactly like a timestamp. Uh, <laughs> I didn't choose this example. This is just how it happened to work out. And um, yeah, I didn't, yeah, what a, what a miracle. And so that's the user ID. And so what is this thing? It's uh, the key for this, the label for this, it's LA. Anyone know? Yeah, it's the last active time. And so it's the last time that this, this particular user ID was online. And uh, you notice it's a Unix time, so it's got one second resolution, right? It goes down to the second. OK, and what's, oh, it's the last active time. Good, good slide awareness. Um, and so what's, what's this one? What's all this stuff? Yeah, I don't know what this is, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if you know, that's great, because you know, maybe someone can tell me. Um, nobody has told me yet, and I hope it's not important. So um, there's also this other bit of random JSON. I'm just going to tell you what this is. You don't have to do any stressful reverse engineering. Uh, so this is your friend's user ID. So, you get th so there's two kinds of JSON. You get the one on the previous slide, and you get this, which has your friend's user ID, and then for that friend, it has uh, what their status is, so online, offline, active, idle, or invisible. Yeah, that's right. And for each of those statuses, it tells you what it's for. So is it the status for the Facebook Messenger app? Is it for Facebook.com? Is, is it some super overarching one? Is it other? Don't know what other does. And so the Facebook app and the Facebook Messenger app are different, so you can be online on one but not the other. And so it gives you all this information about somebody being online. And when I saw this, like, I don't know if I don't know what this says about me as a person, but the first thing I thought when I saw this was, "Oh, that's really creepy. You can graph this, and then you'll be able to see people online and offline." Oh, that's really creepy, and so that's what I did. <laughs> um, well, too late. I've already said it now. So um, remember, this this talk is about these little green dots, right? So if your status is active, then you get a green dot, and if your status is not active, then you get a little time, which says the last time you had a green dot. And so I was wondering when I saw this thing. Well, like, what if there was somebody who was always watching the green dots, like, every second they would just check, is there a green dot there? And then check again, is there a green dot there now? Well, uh, I wrote some code um, one night, and uh, now I have this. Now I have these random log files. And so there's a log file, and it's somebody's user ID, .txt, I blurted out for, you know, security. And uh, you notice I'm doing, and in, in, in each of these log files, I have the time and then the JSON that got logged. So it has... What, for all the different things, like the website, the Facebook app, facebook.com, it has what are, are they offline, are they online, are they invisible on that thing. And uh, you notice I'm doing head-10 here. There's a lot of lines in this, right, because this has been recording for like a long time. And also, I have a lot of these files because, you know, you've got a lot of Facebook friends, or you do if you put your user ID in your talk. Uh, <laughs> and so... Um, I realized I was like, okay, that was easy. I just used this. I just used this secret Facebook API, this slash pull thing, and I downloaded it. And like, there was no, there was no hacking involved. It's just there. It's a, it's a feature. And so, uh, you know, just having these files, just having these log files, is not enough, right? You want to like be able to. You can't really tell what's going on in the log files because they're all just numbers. So I wanted to make a graph out of them. See, like, you can't really understand. Is this person awake? Are they asleep? What are they doing? Where are they? Unless you're like a super nerd and you can read Unix times just automatically, in which case, congratulations. <laughs> so for the graph, uh, oh, sorry, don't let me get ahead of myself. It's actually time for the heckle break. Um, does anyone have any questions? Anyone want to say anything? Just do it. Really? <laughs> no one wants to say your slides are ugly. No one wants to say I can't understand your ridiculous Australian accent. No one? Uh, I didn't check. <laughs> I hope not. Anyone else? I'm sure you could check, but I guess I'm just not that kind of guy. <laughs> Commercialization. That was quick. All right. Um, <laughs> I uh, guess I'm not that kind of guy either. Um, 
let it be known that PyCon AU had way more heckles than you guys. Just saying. Uh, anyway, so I got all these ugly log files and I'm stalking my friends for some reason and so now I want to turn it into a graph. So I was like, okay, you know, it's text, you turn it into a graph. That's what you do when you want to make, when you want to like look at, at, look at text in picture form. So I was like, okay, um, maybe I should use Matplotlib because I've just been writing my thesis recently and I use Matplotlib and that's how you make a graph. I was like, okay, is this how I, like, hey, let's just do it. I don't have time to think about it. Let's go. Let's, let's start doing Matplotlib. And so, okay, let's go Google Matplotlib, give me, take me to the homepage. Oh, okay, you got a pip install. Okay, pip, oh, pip2 or pip3. Oh, geez, okay, and get the right Python version and all that. And then you get Matplotlib, finally. And then you get this elegant code right here that uh, does the graphing. And so, obviously, you import the PyPlot thing and you alias it to plot because you're a data scientist and you have time to type the full thing. And then, obviously, you're going to need this figure object, which is different to the plot object. That's fine. And then you put, then this is the axis, this is the axis of the object, which you alias to 1111, no, which you alias to AX, and you have to type 111 in there. No one knows why you type 111 in there. I'm sure it's very important, though. I'm sure the whole thing will crash if you don't. And then you want to plot the data, and then you have to, you say, okay, I plot my data, and you put RO, which is this wacky micro language for like, oh, R means red, and O means circles, so this makes red circles. And there's this whole micro language there, and I'm pretty sure you can't do OR, because that means like orange R's or something. I don't know how that works. <laughs> so thank goodness, that, thank goodness that you've got these strings here that specify your language. And then you've got to set the major formatting function, because of course, because otherwise your graph will be all wonky. But then you have this, ridiculously long function call which has like a billion magic numbers in there and I'm sure they're extremely important that you have you know exactly this thing in there and then finally you call a function to show the thing and you get something like and what are you doing why 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 is it so complicated to make a graph that was code that, that was code that I took from the matplotlib site by the way and then when you do when you finish running this uh, this masterpiece then you get something like this right so that's not the exact graph that comes from that code but <laughs> <laughs> it's a is a matplotlib graph and like, I mean, it is a graph. It's not, not a graph. I can't discredit it. Like, it's got lines and numbers and everything. But I kind of wanted something more pretty if I'm going to post this on Hacker News, right? I've got to impress all those, these people. And so I can't actually use this. It's not going to work. <laughs> so next graphing library. This is, some, this is something called Bokeh, I think. That's how you say it. No one corrected me last time, so it must be true. And um, this, this thing, I was Googling like, oh my gosh, please don't make me use my Plotlib. How do I get a better graphing library? And this thing, here we go, here it is. It's got a homepage, it's got graph examples, it's got HTML. I was like, sure, those are some colors. Maybe this is the graph, these are the graphs for me. Uh, it markets itself as a Matplotlib killer. So I mean, the stakes had never been lower. And so now we're going to, I'm, I'm sorry if one of you is a Matplotlib author, I don't mean it like that. Um, <laughs> And so here we go, it's time to do a graph. Uh, the API is exactly the same as Matplotlib, so you don't have to change your code, you just change the import. So that's, that's good, it's compatible with that thing we saw before. And like, here we go, we have this graph, and this doesn't generate like an image like Matplotlib does. Matplotlib does. This generates like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and now this is like an interactive graph, so you can like, you can, you can change what's going on on the screen here. It's got this little tool panel thing, and the tools, is like a move tool, and there's a zoom tool, and there's like a, draw a rectangle and zoom to that rectangle tool. But I tried to use it and it was really wonky. Like you can only, like you can use the zoom in tool or the move tool. So you have to like move and then change and then zoom. And then like, I don't know. Also, it's not that good as a graph. Like, come on, it's got like, come on. So it's, <laughs> it's too sciencey. So um, no, I can't, I can't bring this to hack and use. No one will respect me uh, or something. So okay, um, I then, then somebody said, I think it was Einstein, that uh, you can't graph. <laughs> that yeah, uh, nobody graphs. Uh, nobody generates graphs server side anymore. And okay, someone's taking a photo of that. All right, sure, that's great, cool. Put that on the internet. Um, so uh, <laughs> somebody said that you don't generate your graphs server side and then serve them to the clients. That's from the nineties. This is twenty sixteen. Yep, good. You have the Linux desktop. That's how I remember. And um, you can't do this. The new spicy way is that you just send the data from the server and the client has all the fancy graphing stuff. And so by the client, I mean like the browser. And the browser will do all the graphing and all you do is send the data from the server. So I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's be 2016. And I, maybe someone, they rec my friend recommended, I mean, Einstein recommended that I use uh, nvd3.js. Ooh, .js is in green. Um, so here we go. Here it is. It's uh, nvd 3 .js.com or something, I don't remember. Um, how good would it be if there was a .js top-level domain? Anyway, um, 
here it is, and you can use it, and it's uh, <coughs> reusable charts for d3.js. So before you even start using this, you already need to be using this other JavaScript thing. And so like everyone in Hacker News is like, oh, what, you're, you mean you weren't already using this d3.js? Oh, obviously, everyone's using that, so it's no problem to start using this other thing. And so here it is. Um, and also you have to download like CSS for this. This is I just want to make a graph, and now I'm like downloading CSS and JavaScript and learning about JS dependencies. But oh, well, here we are. This is what it takes. And so I was wondering, is this, the, is this a graphing library for me? And so uh, it's a graphing library. It ends with .js. It depends on another thing, and that thing also ends with .js. So I don't see how it can go wrong. Um, so, uh, but then after I post, after this was on Hacker News, somebody did comment, being like, "No, but really, you weren't using the other JS thing. I thought everyone used that fancy JS thing." <sighs> Hacker News. Anyway, here's this graph, which is obviously way better than the other graph. Um, it's actually it's not even good, right? Like it's it's pretty good, but it's, this is not like miles above. This is not like this is not this is not the future of graphing. It's like it's just a graph. But like when you're on your third graphing library and you have like 5,000 Chrome tabs open, then you're like, fine, this will do. So remember, I have this, and I've just learned about the future of modern JavaScript in order to graph it, and now it's time to actually do that graphing. So to do the graph, uh, as promised, since it's not the 90s anymore, we're doing this thing where you just send the data to the browser. And so I turned all the data of people being online and offline into a CSV. And so the CSV is the first thing is the time, and then everything else is whether they're online, offline, or idle on all the different uh, things, so on Facebook.com or on the app or whatever. And so like zero means offline and three means on three means online. And so it's like a little little proprietary format they made up for that. Please don't steal it. Um, and so uh, of now that you've now that you've done all the hard work, you've 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 got you've downloaded your graphing library, you've put it all in the CSV. Finally, it's just easily you just now in the front end you just write JavaScript to do the to do the actual graphing. And obviously you just put this code and it's fine. And now, uh, great, we did it. This is way better than so no. So this is not actually any better. I haven't actually solved my problem at all. All I've done is like outsource my problem more and more. Now okay, it's like, oh, I won't do it in Python, I'll do it in JavaScript, but now I have to write the same spaghetti code in JavaScript instead. So what was the point of doing all that? Um, I don't actually know how to make a good graph or how to make an easy graph. Um, if you know, please tell me. I, may, I think I need like a massive list of like every possible, like a website that has every possible kind of graph and you just click, be like, give me that one. Or I don't know, I don't know how it works. I'm just a boy. And so uh, the moral of the story here, the thing I learned is like, no matter what you do, if you want to make like a non-trivial graph, like more than just a line, then you're going to have to do some sort of spaghetti thing because you have to like change the format of the x-axis and change the format of the y-axis. And oh, you have dates, so that means you need time zones. And oh, what if you want to do more than one line? Who knows off the top of their head how to put more than one line on a graph? I don't know. Maybe some of you do. So I guess next time you go and have to graph something, just be ready for the spaghetti. Okay, so, why so we did all that graphing and we did all the downloading stuff and you learned about the future of JavaScript and stuff, even though it's PyCon. So now let's get to the actual thing that you came here for and let's spy on some people uh, or something like that. And so here's a graph of uh, one of my friends who consented to being on this talk on the condition that they're anonymous. And so here's some person and you can see on the bottom axis is like how far we've zoomed on this graph. So you, these graphs, you can click on them and zoom on them. So that's why we did all that JavaScript spaghetti before. Um, so you can zoom in and this is where we've zoomed to. And this axis is how online they are, because they can be like varying degrees of online. They could be like, oh, idle, well, that's more online than offline, but it's not online. So I made the, the left axis is how online they are. And there's one different line for each <coughs> of the things that they could be online on. So there's a line for status, which is just a general overarching one, which means like whether you get a green dot or not. And there's a line for facebook.com, and there's a line for the Facebook app, and there's a line for the... Facebook Messenger app because they have different lines and there's other to this day I don't know what other does doesn't matter I hope and so now you can see like you can't this this I mean you can see that this is somebody's data but it's not that exciting you can see them using Facebook from like 9:30 till 9:35 on this day and you're like okay I guess I know they were on Facebook then and they were sort of maybe on the mobile client I'm not sure it's kind of messy but you have a lot data. You don't just have this picture. You have a lot of stuff to see. So you can just zoom out from there. And so now, this isn't actually the same graph. Don't tell anyone. Just pretend it zoomed out. Just suspend your belief. And so now you'll notice that uh, on the bottom axis, we have time, uh, just like before. But now there's this weird gap. Like there's stuff happening on the left and there's stuff happening on the right, but there's nothing happening in the middle. And so you'll notice that they're kind of doing stuff until like 11 o'clock and then there's nothing happening and they're doing more stuff at like 10 past nine. And so 
I mean, what do you think is happening between this between these two points in time? I don't know. I couldn't possibly prove it. But they're probably asleep during this time, right? This is probably as in maybe not the entire time because like it's just Facebook. People aren't on Facebook online. People aren't online on Facebook all the time, unless you are. In which case, that's fine. No judgment. And uh, I mean, this probably isn't exactly super accurate, but if you're the kind of person who like is on Facebook until like shortly before you go to sleep and you check Facebook shortly after you wake up, then this is like a reasonably accurate estimation of when you're awake and when you're asleep. One of my friends, like I don't actually do this to my friends, by the way, that would be creepy, but one of my friends was like, hey, Alex, you have these logs. Can you, can you send them to me? It's like a free sleep tracking app. I don't have to enter my hours. Like, please send them to me so I can. <laughs> uh, I should probably do that. Um, anyway, so. Uh, Let's, but like, you don't need to stop there because you have a lot of data because you're very creepy and you're collecting this about your friends for a long time. So uh, you can do this. And so, okay, again, none of these times I've ever actually zoomed out, but just pretend it's the same graph. Um, this is over a few days now rather than a few hours. And you can see I've, at the bottom I've clumsily drawn some red lines on where I think this person is asleep and where I think this person is awake based on when they're online. And it's really creepy, the stuff you can tell from this. So like during the day, it looks like you know they're on Facebook all the time, and there's a gap in the middle of the day on both days. It's like, is that lunchtime? Is that when this person's on the train? I don't know. And then as for the action, and then for the right before they f right before the asleep line on the first night, you can see they're like doing stuff, and then they're offline for a few hours, and they're suddenly online at 3 a.m. And then that, that's the only time they're online, and then they're asleep for a while. So what, have they been doing something, and then they got back and looked at Facebook at 3 a.m.? Who knows? But like it's kind of like it feels really creepy saying this stuff out loud that I'm like stalking this person but I, this is a feature of facebook.com I guess uh, and so you can notice that this person is like you can measure how much how asleep this person is because you can see the width of the asleep section at the bottom changing right on the first time it's quite small and then it gets bigger and then it gets smaller and so you can see how much time they're asleep for if you actually if you assume that the time they're on Facebook is exactly the time they're awake and so, like a responsible person would do, I put this code on GitHub. So, uh, you know, get out your laptops and start cloning right now if that's what you want to do. And so, um, I put this on GitHub because I also wrote a blog post about this and I wanted to like do the proof of concept and all that. And one weird side effect of, you see how it has 17 GitHub issues? Um, people like, people make issues being like, hey, hey, what up, I'm just here to report a bug. I'm trying to stalk my ex on Facebook, except I can't, you know, can't get it to work with, uh, can't how to put my Facebook cookie in there. Can you help me? And I'm like, I. Mm, I don't <laughs> mm, oh, sorry, I don't really check these issues. Uh, I'm just going to run away. And people are like, hey, so I'm trying to do this on Windows, and I'm trying to do it at a massive scale. Can you add Python 2 support? And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about at a massive scale. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm just going to leave that up there for a bit longer in case anyone needs to copy that link down. <laughs> and we're done. So, I mean, I just showed you how to make a graph of one person, but obviously you have graphs for everybody who's your Facebook friend. So I just showed you one graph, but you actually have a graph of everybody. And uh, aside from you know sitting in your ivory tower surrounded by graphs, looking at them, some other things you could do is you could look for you could look for like outliers, both in terms of people and in terms of for one particular person. So let me explain what I mean. You could stalk one person in particular and like measure what time they go to sleep and what time they wake up and stuff and be really creepy. But if you notice that they were, if you notice that on some days they were going to sleep and waking up at a different time to other days, you could be like, oh, that's interesting. What's so strange about this person? Or you could also average over all your, or like you could look over all your friends and find somebody who has really weird sleep patterns. And now you know about their weird sleep patterns. And like, I don't think they consented to that when they accepted your Facebook friend request. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Sorry. Or maybe some people have the same sleep patterns, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some people were some people were telling me never mind. <laughs> um uh, yeah, someone was trying to use this to figure out who was talking to each other, like figure out who was Facebook messaging each other, because if they were online at the same time. I haven't seen that person since, so I hope, I hope they're okay. <laughs> um another thing you could do is you could um like I haven't done this, but another thing you could do is get a like write some more code to get the like time that somebody woke up and time that they slept and measure how long they were asleep for and get it to every morning at like nine o'clock or whatever, email you with the people who slept for like less than five hours and then you can like see them in real life and you'd be like, Oh, you look sleepy. What's what was wrong? <laughs> 
I, like, I haven't read the Facebook Terms of Service, but I'm pretty sure that's not a feature. Um, is anyone from Facebook here? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> at uh, at PyCon AU, someone asked a question, and they were like, hey, I'm a security engineer at Facebook. And I was like, oh, hey, hello. <laughs> nice to see you here. Um, anyway, so why does this work? Um, so the whole reason, this is, this is not actually hacking, by the way. There's been no, there's been no hardcore hacking in this. There's just a secret API out there on Facebook that slash pull thing. It's not, it's not in the official Facebook API. It's not documented, but that's how the front end works. That's how Facebook.com gets the data. And so I was just pretending that I was Facebook.com and getting the same data. And so the reason it works is because there's this secret undocumented API that you just have to poke around and find. And so if you're a developer, then uh, you should assume that if, just because you don't document an API, someone's going to find it and figure out how it works. Somebody really bored like me is going to go and find it and see what the deal with this API is. That doesn't mean, oh, I don't have to document my APIs anymore because somebody really bored. Well, no, you still have to document your APIs. <laughs> and uh, if you're looking for interesting stuff to do, maybe a good place to start would be looking at uh, the secret APIs of stuff, of like lots of websites. Uh, maybe you'll be the first person to find it. But um, you might be thinking like, Oh, those those foolish those uh, those foolish developers. They weren't thinking about it. That's why they made that dodgy API. I wish the why why can't they be why can't they just be good and not make APIs like this and be be nice to them? Because it's hard. It's hard to like think about this stuff. It's hard to like realize that oh, this is actually a public API. I didn't know that. Like you're not actually thinking about oh, but what if somebody comes and uses my API and grabs one? Their friends are awake. Like you're not thinking that when you're like doing your development. You're like should I use a list or a set? Like you got other things on your mind. And so and the reason the reason you have other things on your mind is because you can only pay attention to so many things at once. Um, this this doesn't have that much to do with this talk, but it's a fun exercise. So I'm going to do it anyway. And so to show you the uh, to show you what I'm talking about with uh, you can only pay attention to some things at once. Let me can I ask all of you who want to play this game to close your eyes right now? Okay, somebody grab their wallets. Um, no, it's okay. So keep your eyes closed. And so I've been talking to you for like 20 minutes or something. So without opening your eyes and without saying anything, just think to yourself: What am I wearing right now? What clothes do I have? Don't don't look yet. Just think about it. And once you have an answer, okay, open your eyes. Who who was who was right? Put your hand if you were right. Oh yeah, that's most of you. That's pretty good. Maybe I'm wearing very distinctive clothes today. Okay, so everybody close your eyes again. So you just had you just had your eyes open for a second. So you have no excuses now. So what clothes are you wearing right now? Just just think about it. Just, well, just think about what clothes am I wearing? Okay, open your eyes. Okay, so who, who was right this time? There's about, no, it's close, but there's about maybe 25% less of you, maybe 50% less of you right this time. And so the reason, the reason, oh, also, did anyone notice that it now says giraffe instead of attention on the slides? Yeah. So the re good, some of you did. So the reason that that works is because you can only concentrate on one thing at a time. So just, just don't, don't, don't hate on those developers who make those secret undocumented APIs because they were probably thinking about something else at the time. You really have to consciously think about it to not do that kind of thing. Okay, um, morality lesson over. So um, you might be wondering, like, hey, I'm your Facebook friend. Can yeah, like maybe some of you just added me on Facebook because you saw my user ID, and you're like, can I stop you from doing this to me? Can I not be? Can I not opt into this NSA program? And um, the answer is kinda. Um, so uh, I didn't know this, but I found out recently that you can you can like turn off the the live feature of Facebook Chat. So you can like it's called turn off chat, and it's in the menus somewhere on Facebook.com or Messenger.com, but not the other one. I always forget which one. And uh, you just go in there and you turn off chat. And so what that means is nobody can see when you've read their message. You can't like you don't get the red message thing. People can't see when you've read their message, and you can't see when they've read it. It's like email. And also, you don't ever appear online or offline, but you can't see when other people are online or offline. So it's kind of like an opt-in thing. So if you want to see when other people are online, you also have to let other people see when you're online. Uh, so you can do that if you want. Incidentally, I'm online all the time because my thing is always running. You know, my script is always running, downloading stuff, logged in as me. So uh, I'm always online. And you might be wondering, like, why did you do this? Like, what were you thinking when you saw that weird pull thing and decided to do all this work? I don't know. I just don't get out much, I guess. Uh, uh, I don't know. But the, I encourage you to go and, like, when you see that secret undocumented API, don't just be like, huh, that's weird, and move on. When you see something that's weird, like, you should, like, jump onto that and be like, hmm, that's weird. Time to learn everything about it. Um, so if you like this talk, you might like this website. <laughs> uh, it might... You might find some content that's relatable to you on this site, and uh, you also might be wondering, like, this talk's mostly been about like weird internet stuff, and there was some JavaScript in there. So, like, what's in this? Why is this? Why is this at PyCon? What talk? What, what's in it for me if I'm like a Python developer? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. Did we have any extra questions that you didn't get to ask during the talk? Okay. Or any heckles? Just go for it. <laughs> <coughs> um, thanks for the talk. I just have one question. So, um, do you need to handle authentication problem? So, do you need to s use script to log into Facebook before you fetch the data? Uh, yeah. The short, an the short answer is yes. So you need to supply like so to. For the code on GitHub, you need to supply your like Facebook cookie and Facebook user ID and stuff. So this script, so yes, you have to log in as yourself or whatever Facebook account you happen to be using. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, like for example, I wouldn't make a fake Facebook account do that with a fake identity because that's against the terms of service. So I would never do that. Right, okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Do you know if that only works for your friends, or does it work for any user ID? Um, good question. Does it work for any user ID? Uh, I don't know. I haven't tried searching for random user IDs because I'm not creepy like that. But uh, I imagine that it wouldn't work because you are just asking this. You're at the mercy of the Facebook.com/pull endpoint, and all you do is pulling. All you're doing is pulling that and saying, "Please give me whatever you have," and it gives you your friends or who it thinks that you want to see on the sidebar, and so it probably isn't going to give you random people who you aren't friends with, but I haven't, I haven't searched for it. Is it all your friends, or just the people who participate in the, in the sidebar? Um, so the question was, is it all your friends, or is it just the people who appear on the sidebar? Uh, I don't know. I looked into this a little bit. I think the people, so obviously you get everybody who appears on the sidebar, because that's what it would render on the front end. But I noticed that when you resize the Facebook window, when you make it longer, it makes the chat sidebar longer. So you actually have more people there. So I don't think it's all your friends all the time, but I think it's like a lot, and it's whoever Facebook thinks that you want to see on the sidebar. Any more questions? No? All right, well, thank you very much, Alex. So can we all... <laughs>